Every single time we hear that song, we just laugh. We love it because Doug Basham, he always raises hell on his show. Every week on KDWN Saturdays, 2 to 4 p.m. The only liberal talk show host in the state of Nevada. And always a good debate when uh, Doug and J.D. go after it. Doug, thank you so much for joining us, my friend. How are you? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? I am doing awesome. Doing great, Doug. So, Doug, boy, on. a lot to get to, a lot to talk about. Let me just start with what we have been talking about. That is Bubba Wallace, the whole news situation. My take is, you know, people on the right are vilifying this guy, Bubba Wallace, who, in my estimation, based on the evidence, did absolutely nothing wrong. Some people are calling him Bubba Smollett. I don't even want to mention some of the names of the people that are doing it because, quite frankly, they don't deserve their name to be mentioned. But, I mean, what do you make of that, people on the right that are vilifying this guy? I think basically it's their way of discreetly showing their inner racism. I mean, why, why attack him otherwise? J.D., do you have anything you want to say to that? Uh, no. I mean, I, I, I don't think it's inner racism at all. Bubba, Bubba Wallace should not have gone forward and claimed it was a despicable hate crime until he actually knew that it was. And I think that in doing that, is, is he made an effort of, of vilifying the entire sport of NASCAR, his fellow drivers, and anyone who had access to his garage as well as the fans of the sport. And people like Jamel Hill you know, propagated and perpetuated that. So, but, the I don't, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call that race. I mean, it's it's all it's all behavior based. That that's why I've made the statements that I've made because he what what he did, not who he is or, or the color of his skin. That has nothing to do with anything. Right, but you're not attacking him in in the same context as the other people are, JD. I wasn't including you in the in the group that I that that I was attacking. I mean, oh okay, it's like yeah. People look for a reason to attack the black guy. Well, no, I agree. I think I think Bubba Smollett is is over the top. This was not a hoax. Obviously, there was a rope, whether it was a noose or, or a double bowline, whatever it is. There was definitely a rope there. I mean, it's it's but clear you, as day. This is what I don't understand. You are too logical and too intelligent to be a conservative Republican that supports Donald Trump. <laughs> what would you say well, to that? Dude? I appreciate that, Doug. <laughs> He's we're, right, we're, by the way. We're, we're going to agree to disagree on that one. And, and I, one of the reasons why I support Donald Trump as adamantly as I do is because I am a staunch capitalist. And I think that there is a, a, a major movement right now to integrate socialism or, or Marxism or, or, or a combination of that into the economy right now that I do not ag agree with at all. Well, speaking of Donald Trump, Doug, let's switch topics here real quickly. Uh, so Donald Trump, uh, in another speech, this time in Arizona, referred to the coronavirus as the Kung Flu. I want to play this audio clip for you. Have a listen to this, and then we'll talk about it. With COVID, did you ever notice? I said the other night, did anybody see my speech the other night on Saturday night? Yeah. So, what I said the other night, there's never been anything where they have so many names. I could give you 19 or 20 names for that, right? It's got all different names. Wuhan. Now, Wuhan was catching on. Coronavirus, right? Kung flu, yeah. <laughs> Kung flu. It's just amazing to me. And you got all these idiots in the crowd that are that are egging him on to say it, and they're cheering Ingrid. and laughing. Yeah. Well, what would you say up to that, Doug? Well, I mean, if you noticed either his rally in Tulsa or the one yesterday in Arizona. The crowd sits there, and what they respond to the most are the most childish things that he says. He went on for like five minutes. I, f I forget what it was, over something in Tulsa. And the crowd sat there like statues. And then at the end, when he called someone a son of a bitch, they all went nuts and applauded. I'm going, really? This is how low you have, you know, how far you have sunk the bar for your president? You applaud when he's vulgar? Yeah, I mean, I, I listened to, to that again, and in, in, in all fairness, Brian and Doug, the crowd did bring that name up, and he said, yeah, that, that's a name that can well, be used. But what does that but say it, about them, it, well, it, well, I mean, fair enough. In, in my opinion, that, that name, that name is – in Tulsa. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't use that name. I am extremely disappointed with how China did mislead us from day one with this virus. I believe that had, well, had the information been given earlier, our, our, our death toll will be nowhere near what it is now. But that being said, should he have used the word kung flu? Of course, it was in, it was in poor taste. And if if you actually look at the the, the population across, I mean, Nevada has an eleven percent Asian American population. So I think Donald Trump needs to consider who you know how many people are actually in, in the United States can be offended that by that before he actually makes those statements. But JD, the problem is everything he says, everything he does is in poor taste. Would you agree? Can we all agree here? 
Uh, I, I will say no. that that was in poor taste. I'm not going to say everything he does is in poor taste, Doug. Okay. Would you say saying Kung Flu is in poor taste? Can we all at least agree I on did. that? I did. I just said it twice. I'll say it for the third time. I think Kung Flu is in poor taste. That being said, I don't think that the word has the negative connotation that the N-word does. Uh, I didn't I, say. I, well, of course. You're right. I didn't okay. say that. Okay. Nobody. I don't think. Name me one person that said that. There's not one person that's claiming that saying the Kung Flu is comparing it to the N-word. I haven't heard one person on the planet that has made that. And there's a lot of people. Well, on, meaning, on meaning that I, I don't think that Kung Flu is overtly racist. I think I think right. that it's important. Well, let's talk why, about. Whereas saying the the N word sure. is is clearly overtly all right. racist. So we all agree. That's why I brought that. I, up. I think we all agree on that. So let's move on now. I'm sure we'll disagree on some things here. Of Doug Basham joining us. Uh, this so is where speaking, we've agreed twice. Speaking, speaking of poor taste, okay. The president of the United States, as you know, Doug, 120,000 plus people have died of the coronavirus, and the president uh, the other day made a joke, although he's saying he wasn't joking, uh, about. I'm going to tell people to test less. I'm going to tell my people maybe we need to test less. So those in Donald Trump's administration have called it tongue-in-cheek. Kaylee, who did a press conference, uh, said he was joking. Uh, and then Donald Trump was asked about it. And then doubled down in his comments, said that he doesn't joke. So not only is he throwing all of his people in his administration under the bus, he doubled down on his comments. What do you say to that? Well... My opinion is, and this I think a lot of people overlook this, a lot of the excuses they come up with to defend the indefensible Trump are almost as bad as what they're trying to cover. It's like, oh, so you're saying he was joking, like 120,000 deaths, mostly from his ambivalence and inaction and incompetence and refusal to take the virus seriously. It's okay to joke about that? I mean, granted, that's not as bad as telling people to do less testing. But it's it's not that far below it. And the excuses they come up with, he doesn't look any better. This is nothing to joke about. A lot of these people who have died from this virus have done so because of Donald Trump's inaction and failure of leadership. And really, should he be joking about it? You know, Doug, I have, we haven't talked about this before, but there were there were five Democratic governors. You know, Governor, Governor Wolf, Governor Cuomo, Governor Newsom, Governor Whitmer. And, and also there was the, going to say I'm I am I am and, and there was and there was there was one leadership did they have there, there was one Republican governor the, the governor of Massachusetts Charlie Baker who actually did the exact same thing but these governors they forced patients or they forced nursing homes to take patients that were previously sick in the hospital with COVID-19 in, into their into their facilities what what do you say about about those those six governors I mean and it probably led to 20 to 30,000 deaths that should not have taken place because you had you had the nursing home you had virus running rampant through the nursing home to, to the and I'm, I'm not talking a retirement home I'm talking a nursing home where people are already sick and and they're the average age is 79 years old what do you say about that honestly well if you want me to say that nobody made mistakes in this virus venture that we're currently on I'm not going to say that. Of course, people made mistakes, but it would have been helpful if there was some kind of national leadership and guidance. We had none. Donald Trump is in charge of this. And what do you say? Oh, it's up to the governors. I mean, there, there has been from day one and up until today, there has been no national leadership and guidance. And it's like, OK, so this governor did this. And what guidance did he have to do otherwise? Answer, none. But but where do you where do you include China and who in that conversation? Because and, and and obviously even Anthony Fauci, Anthony Fauci on multiple occasions he not only did he claim that masks didn't work, but he said that the virus was something that we shouldn't have to worry about no, he on didn't multiple say occasions. That masks didn't work. He recommended people not go out and mass buy them to to create a shortage for the first line workers who needed them and didn't have them. He didn't say they didn't work. He recommended against the, this mass hoarding of them to deprive the people who needed them in the hospitals of having them. And, and even now, you know, we've all been wearing a lot. I've been wearing masks. And I'm, not, I'm not proud to admit it, but I have. I've been wearing masks lately. I, I wore a mask on an airplane. I wear a mask when I, when I drop my daughter off to school. I wear, I wear my mask at the grocery store in cases. There was 36,000 yesterday. There's 14,000 by, by 11 o'clock or by 1030 at, the last time I looked already today. But it, it looks like masks aren't as effective as, as people are claiming them to be. What do, what do you attribute the, the recent rise in cases to? And how much do you think that protests, the, the protests nationwide, where you probably had 500 to 700,000 people protesting you know, collectively across the country, how, 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 how much do you think that that factored into this, you know, to this sudden in, increase in caseload? Well, I don't, I don't think we've fully seen the results of the protests because there's a 14 to 21 day incubation period and second of all most of them were wearing masks and they were out they were outdoors where virus spread is is less 
Yeah. The the increase we're seeing now is because of the ill-fated Memorial Day in or Memorial Day reopening. Well, well, let's talk a little bit about that because let's talk about the Mike Pence excuse, the Pence excuse, uh, the circle jerk excuses uh, from Mike Pence himself. Uh, he uses the excuse, well, you know, the only reason why we have more cases of the coronavirus, the only reason is because we have more testing. I mean, that's, that's why insane. Donald Trump, yeah, right, and that's why Donald Trump made the quote-unquote joke, even though he doesn't admit it's a joke. Uh, I told my people to, to test less. What do you make of the right-wing theory that uh, the only reason why we have more coronavirus testing is because of that? Right, it's absolutely stupid and insane. The reason we have more positive cases is because more people are getting sick. Trump went to Arizona yesterday. Two weeks ago, they were averaging 1,000 new cases a day. Mm -hmm. One week ago, it was up to 2,000 a day. For the last few days, it's been 3,000 a day. And yesterday, it was 3,500 the day he was there. This is insane. The reason we're getting more positive cases is because more people are getting sick. And if their thing is, well, if we didn't test so much, we wouldn't have so many cases. Well, yeah, but, but the more you test, the more negative cases you're going to get, too. So the whole thing is just stupid, and it's a distraction from the failures of Donald Trump. It's another shiny object so people don't say, wait a minute, the reason we are having so many cases, we have over one quarter of the world's coronavirus deaths. Why is that? And the question I always ask, and I don't think I've received a satisfactory answer yet, on January 21st, South Korea and the United States each had their first case. By March 3rd, South Korea had 28 deaths. We had nine. Fast forward to today, South Korea's had 281 deaths, and we've had 123,000. The difference, leadership. Their leadership took over right from the beginning. They didn't treat it as a hoax. They didn't downplay it. And they wore masks themselves and told everybody to, else to. I heard a great report last night that, that our shutdown was the equivalent of other countries' uh, first phase reopening. That's how serious we took it. And a lot of us did. But collectively as a country, we didn't and we're still not. And that, that rally yesterday in Arizona was a perfect example. Arizona's cases aren't spiking. They are exploding and all these nimrods are sitting in the audience without masks. I mean, it's can, we, can we talk about that? They're doing it because of the lack of leadership. Well, well, Doug, from Trump. And, and, and all, in all fairness, that audience was very young, and it's it's been. You know, it doesn't matter. It, it's it's been, but it, but it, else, I, that's maybe. true. But it has been proven that this virus does not adversely affect the younger population. In fact, a study came out out of Stanford a couple of days ago that if you are under the age of 70, the mortality rate is two and a half times less than the flu. Okay, but they can, again, it doesn't matter so are because you anybody... That the elderly can't catch it from these young bucks? I'm not saying that at all. I'm, I, okay, so I, 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 I firmly believe that the elderly should be protecting themselves, especially if they are high well, risk. Well, if more people in society that are young uh, contract the virus, then it puts the elderly at risk. So that study doesn't uh, mean well, anything that, that, That's me. assuming that they interact. Um, yeah, I would assume that at times there are people that are younger that would interact with older people. So, yes, I would assume that. I think it's a fair assumption. But let's talk about that for a second. Uh, Doug, you just mentioned, uh, you know, the, the rally that took place yesterday, and I couldn't agree with you more. And then there's the Tulsa rally, right, where apparently there were a million tickets sold, and everybody in Trump's administration was boasting and gloating how people were waiting out there and tenting days before the event. It was going to be a sellout. And then we learned that there were less people at Donald Trump's rally in Tulsa than at some Wrangler hockey games back in the day at the Orleans Arena. What do you, what do you say to that? Well, they have come up with so many excuses to justify the poor turnout in Tulsa. And my favorite one is, well, Biden doesn't get that many. Well, the point is, it is Donald Trump who measures his success by the number of people that show up. As far as the million tickets and... The, the Gen Zers or the Zoomers that bought these tickets with, you know, with no intention of going, that's no excuse. It's not like they had a limit on tickets, and, and once they hit that, no, no other tickets were given out. No, as many Trump supporters could have requested tickets and shown up at that rally as wanted to. The bottom line is they could only get 6,200 people to do that, which, in all honesty, gives me hope. <laughs> So, you know, do you think, and we talked about it last week, and I said that this should not have been an indoor event. 
I can tell you, Doug, I'm, I'm a pretty avid Trump supporter. If I lived in Tulsa, I would have not attended an indoor rally. I just wouldn't have done it. I know that. I believe that. Yeah. Because yeah, I, you I, I, are I, more intelligent than the average Trump supporter, which leads me to wonder why you are. I mean, you gave me your capitalism reason, and I accept that. Okay. But you would get that with any with any president, Democratic or Republican. You know, I, I, but I'm, as of late, I've, I've seen some things like what happened in, you know, Chaz Chop and the, the new you know, attempted you know, Black House Autonomous Zone and the statues that are going down and the way that they're going down and just the fact that there's been a lot of public unrest and, and no, no respect for, for businesses that, are, that have been looted and destroyed. And have, people have made excuses like, well, you know, they, they have X amount of dollars and insurance can pay for it. Insurance well, doesn't have an unlimited budget. You understand that according to the FBI, the Department of Homeland Security, and the Counterterrorism Agency, that this violence is being perpetrated traded mostly by right-wing extremists, not left-wing. I'm talking about the actual destruction. I mean, I, I've seen so I. Video, I, I've seen a lot of videos of looting, looting and destruction of these properties, and and they have been, you know, they they have been African American. I don't know if they're part of BLM or, or what you know what the situation there is, but and I, I, a lot it's of people have, FBI have, says. have. I've seen videos, Brian. I've seen probably just, 15 videos again, myself. Again, I, just just FBI just, has seen more than 15 just, videos. just like just like that second, you no, know, the, the the double bow line. I saw I saw that picture, okay, Brian. Uh, FBI. But that being said, Doug, it's not saying you know, that. 6200 showed up fine. But 10 million watched this thing. Fox had their biggest night in, you know, in on the biggest Saturday night in history. Another right, four million streamed it. How do you? excuses. No, I'm, no, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm asking you, I'm asking you. The size of a crowd in person. Well, obviously the interest is there. I mean, more watched than the State of the Union. But do you believe that this was a success or a failure based on, you know, despite the TV ratings, just, just based on the fact that the crowd was so small? By Donald Trump's own criteria, it was a massive failure. He, he set up a stage outside that was more in kind with what a rock band would use for the overflow crowd. That's true. They, they tore that down before he even got there. So, of course, it was a failure, and any attempt to spin it otherwise is just trying to dangle a shiny object to once again just. Uh-oh, did we lose Doug? Mr. No. Basham? Doug, okay. okay, all right, all right you got Okay, Very so, brief. Doug, Doug I want to add something. I think this is important because J.D. just mentioned a couple things about the riders and uh, the Chaz, what's taking place in Seattle. Chaz, Chaz, and, Chaz. On, let, Chaz me just, and, let me just make my point, and please. The okay, let, let me just make my okay. point. Uh, so... Joe Biden came out immediately, and he said he's not for defunding the police, yet many on the right will lead you to believe that he is for defunding the police, where you couldn't name me more than maybe one or two Democrats, and, and I think some of them are mayors, that are for defunding the police, okay? So that's number one. Number two, Joe Biden, and you couldn't name me any prominent Democrat in office right now that has said anything positive about rioters or people that are burning down buildings. It's just not happening. So the idea that... Some people on the right want to make it out that Democrats support the rioters is absurd. That's number two. And I, I think the last thing I would say is this. Many on the right want to paint out Democrats as those people who are just race baiters. All they care about is white versus black. It's their base. All they care, you know, they, it's, it's nonsense to me. And I can't name you many Democrats who are for this Chaz movement. Okay, I know the mayor in, Se uh, in Seattle is a moron, okay? And by by the way, hold by on, the way, let me just finish. Okay. I, I couldn't, you can't name me one prominent Democrat, including Joe Biden, that thinks it's okay for police to not be in a specific zone. You just can't. So that's, that, that, uh, it's very important that I bring these things up because it's a right-wing narrative that is factually inaccurate. Uh, Doug, would you agree with that? Oh, of course. And, and as far as this whole defund the police movement, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago. Most of the people that support it are not supporting the total defunding of the police, but rather a reallocation of the resources to people who might be better equipped to handle certain situations than the cops. But as I said two weeks ago, our side is not real good at bumper sticker slogans. We're nuanced, we're detailed, we're long-winded, and we don't do short bumper sticker slogans well and defund the police is the wrong one because it it it, it opens the door for people it scares to say, people well, what would happen if you had no cops well yeah. nobody well, is saying that well i can tell you this doug they they disbanded the the anti-crime unit which is the plain you know police officers and NY, NY, nypd a couple well actually on the 15th they did that and by sunday they had 70 shootings the, the year before they had 12 so there was there's obviously something that that's taken place there and it's not so much that it, it's a lot of people that are there on the left that are talking about defund the police. It's it's who they are. Kamala Harris, for example, I believe that Joe Biden. We've talked about this, but Joe Biden's vice president 
is the most important vice presidential candidate probably in the last hundred years because I don't think that Joe Biden's going to be able to finish his term. I think that his vice president, assuming that he wins, is going to actually be president. And Kamala Harris last week came out and said that she does support defunding the police. And now, to Brian's point, Mayor, Mayor Jenny Durkin in Seattle did just make a proposal to drop the police budget by $20 million, which is only 5%. I don't have a problem with 5%. 50%, 40%, 30%, whole different conversation. So hopefully if that takes place, then I actually then I think that, that that could be a reasonable move for the Seattle police to, 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 to defund that amount. Do you agree with that, Doug? Yeah. I but do. again, but 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 again, uh, there might be a few Democrats out there, but the idea that the Democratic policy well, hold on, the idea that the entire Democratic platform and policy is to defund the police is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard in my life because it's not true. It's just a lie. Well, and again, my, my biggest issue, and I'm not saying that there's 50 Democrats that are doing that, but the fact that Kamala Harris, who has a very, very good chance, I believe that she will be Joe Biden's presidential, no vice should. president. I think it's going to be her. But the fact that she says that, she has a chance to be the president of the United States, a very, a very, very real chance. And so that, that's why I bring that up, and, and, and that's why someone who, as, who is as prominent and potentially important, you know, in – to the country as Kamala Harris when she says that it scares people including and, and, me. And by the way another point that our my producer just well, told right, me is which absolutely is why I said we did yeah. a bad job in coming up with the bumper sticker slogan for reforming the police. That's what it should have been. Police reformation, not right. reforming I agree. the police because Kamala Harris doesn't mean it in the context it's being said so right. she shouldn't use it. I agree. Because I agree with that. It's a mistake. Ten minute explanation afterwards. I, They're going to hear the catchphrase and run with it. Right. right. I, I agree, true. and that was a mistake. But let's also be very honest about this. Disband does not mean uh, you know displace the police or disband the police. I should say. Exactly. That is that is very very important. While I do not agree with defunding the police, uh, it does not mean we're getting rid of police altogether. And anybody who thinks that is a complete looney tune. Well, moron. It, but it, it did mean that in the in the case of the anti crime unit in NYPD, where they they to, they totally. This, they deleted the unit, and now they, they did move those officers to different parts. There are going to, but, but, ha, but having those plain cloth officers on the street helped because no, no one knew they were police that officers. Is, that they, is, they were technically I, undercover. I understand, but that is not going to happen in society where there's, you're not going to be able to call 911 and get help. It's and just not going to happen. If I, if I could just interject something here. When I started into my bit making the comparison between South Korea and the United States, and I said to date – I have still yet to get a satisfactory response. I just want to be on the record as saying again today I didn't get one. <laughs> that's that's good to know. I've actually I've never heard that bit before, but uh, I will I will take a look into it myself. So uh, next time we talk, next time we talk, I'll give you a response. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Absolutely. So Doug, give me a little bit of a preview. Uh, what do you got going on uh, since I know last time we talked to you it was Friday. We didn't have you on Wednesday. Uh, but we got a few, I know it's kind of hard to do a show. And then I ask you on a Wednesday, what do you think you're going to be covering on Saturday? Because who knows what's, what Trump is going to say next in the next couple of days. I mean, I do you, know, I, and it's been like yeah. that for three and a half years and it has been so frustrating. <laughs> I had my whole show mapped so that, out for this week. That's why you hate him, Doug. to bed on Saturday night. <laughs> yep. How many times does that happen where you get your show ready to go? Yeah, that's what it is. He's forced Every to pivot. Every single week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to ask you the question. What do you Just plan? Up for one day so I don't have to change my show at midnight on Friday night. <laughs> so I have to ask, what do you plan on talking about Saturday before we let you go? Well, <laughs> the show I had mapped out dealt with um, the rally and the poor turnout and all the excuses that followed. And then I thought, well, we're going to have to talk about the Tuesday rally in Arizona because he actually had the nerve to say, I don't know what the 19 and COVID-19 stands for. We are <laughs> months into this virus pandemic, and the leader of this country still doesn't know what it means. I believe that it was the year. That it was found what, right? Well, Rush Limbaugh went on a show and said, we've had 18 COVID viruses before this. That's why it's called yeah. 19. No, it's called yeah. 19 because it was discovered in 2019. Well, right. just, I wonder just... how many people actually know what COVID-19 stands for. <laughs> well, I'm just. Yeah, yeah. Coronavirus disease 19. Yeah. See? <laughs> I'm shocked. Intelligent to be a Trump supporter. <laughs> I'm just. No more than Donald Trump. No, and I'm, I'm, I'm just face. I'm just well read. I'm just shocked that Rush Limbaugh said something that wasn't factually accurate because he seems like a guy I, I that know. really bases things I, I, I on facts. Yeah. That night. yeah, I'm just I'm just shocked that Rush that must be the first mistake he's ever made. Oh boy. Oh listen, Doug, you don't make a lot of mistakes. We I love your show, by the way. Every Saturday, two to four PM oh, on one. P 
Yeah, I'm, I'm that guy. I love your show. <laughs> 2 to 4 p.m. on Saturdays. In fact, I was driving out to California on Saturday. And while I was driving out there, guess who I was listening to? None other than yours truly, Doug Basham. So, oh, Doug, you're the best. <laughs> honestly, I listened to it as well, Doug. You had some pretty good one-liners. Yes, I, you did. The check that. is in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, I love you, man. Thanks for coming on as always. We'll catch up with you next week. Have a great weekend, okay? Yeah, thanks yeah, a lot, Doug. I love Doug. you guys, too. Stay safe. All right. All right. That is Doug Basham, the only liberal talk shows talk show host in the state of Nevada. All right. So you want to talk about controversy. If we haven't already talked about some very serious topics. Uh, look, the Hey Reb statue on the UNLV campus was taken down, if you recall. And we've gotten the side of those in the student union who wanted it taken down. Well, now we're going to get the side of a man who, you know, his name is Danny Tarkanian. Of course, if you know Danny, he played for UNLV under his father, the late, great, of course, Jerry Tarkanian. There are rumblings now that the Hey Reb is a mascot going to be gone. And guess what? They might replace it with a shark mascot. We're going to ask Danny Tarkanian about that, his thoughts on the Hey Reb statue, and also congratulate him because he won an election in Douglas County. We'll talk about that coming up next with former running rebel, I'm still going to say it, Danny Tarkanian. Danny Tarkanian, come up next. Vegas Take right here, 101.5 FM, 720 AM, K Don.